Good morning and welcome to chapel um, and welcome to October. The, the weather is getting better. It's a little crispier. The wind has brought the smoke out of our area and, and made it a little bit nicer for us to be outside. So we're so thankful that some of us can be in school and we're waiting patiently for our seventh and eighth graders to return. We love you and we miss you and welcome to chapel. We're going to start off chapel with a song that we haven't sung in a little while. Um, and uh, um, it, it starts off with the words, na, 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 na. You all know what that is, or most of you know what that is. So uh, let's take it together with me, okay? Na, 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 Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Please join me in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, our God, we thank you for this glorious day. We thank you for school. We thank you for our friends, uh, for our teachers, for our parents, our families, uh, for all the things, Lord, that make our lives possible and give us blessing. And so today, Lord, we thank you that you came into our lives that you came into this world and you came as the light into our world so that we would not have to walk in darkness, but that we could walk in the light of life and that we could have life in your name. Lord Jesus, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify your name today. And it is in your name that we pray and all God's people said, amen, amen. amen. And so we're going to sing this song about, uh, it's not about how Jesus is the light, but 
Uh, it's a song about how he loves us, and uh, you know the song, so uh, please join with me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me. So, uh, like I said, I want to talk to you a little bit today about how uh, Jesus is the light of the world. And once again, we're on this theme this year of the great I am's. And Jesus made seven I am statements in the book of John. And this is the second of those seven. This is our theme for this month of October. And so in John chapter 8, verse 12, there's a great festival going on. We sometimes refer to it as the Feast of Booths or the Feast of Tabernacles. That's a little fancier word than booth. Uh, but what that feast was all about was that um, the people celebrated that they wandered 40 years in the wilderness. The people of Israel wandered as they came out from Egypt and from the land of slavery. And God led them through the wilderness that 40 years, but he did more than that. He provided them food and water in miraculous ways. He led them to Mount Sinai, where uh, he led Moses up to the top of the mountain and delivered his law to uh, Moses, and then Moses gave it to the people. And they celebrate that event, and they celebrate the fact that for 40 years, God kept them alive in a very desolate, desolate place by his very hand and by the miracles that he performed. And so every year the Jews would get together in Jerusalem and they would celebrate this time of God's provision in what was called the Feast of Booths. And the reason they called it that was because uh, the people would um, kind of relive their experience in the wilderness and how they had to uh, build these kind of shelters or you know, little shacks almost uh, with just what they could find out in the wilderness. And uh, they would sleep under these structures. 
And they would celebrate that every year in Jerusalem, even though they had perfectly good homes, by building those booths. And they would kind of uh, do a camp out for about a month or so. That's really what it came down to, was a big giant camp out in Jerusalem. And every night during this festival, they would go up to where the temple was built in Jerusalem. They would climb up uh, to that temple mount and there would be a big celebration up there where the priests would go down to the pool of Siloam and bring up these large jars of water. And then they would empty them out right at the altar uh, to signify uh, God providing the earth with water, with water to drink in and God providing everything that was uh, necessary for, uh, for life and for health. But then there was this other part of the festival that they celebrated at that time where they would have these huge, gigantic torches up there on the Temple Mount, and they would light these. And uh, it would be such a huge light that uh, people said that they could see the light from miles away. And Jerusalem would be this uh, city that was up on a hill and with those lights uh, uh, blazing away, with those torches blazing, you could see the city from miles and miles off. And so it was on the last night of this festival, you know, when they brought the water jars up and were emptying them, and then they would parade around with these huge gigantic torches, um, and the city would be very festive and people would be joyful that Jesus uh, stood up in the uh, middle of that festival and said, if anyone thirsts, uh, let him come to me and I will give him water that will be in him like a spring of water uh, welling up to eternal life. But then Jesus said something else at the festival that we really remember also. He said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And you can imagine that when Jesus said that, when he said, I am the light of the world, the people were looking at these huge torches and thinking, well, you know, this, this is the most light that we have. But Jesus was pointing to himself and saying, I am the true light of the world. And then he gives this promise where he says, if anyone follows after me, he will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And so that uh, leads me to the question, well, how then do we follow Jesus? How do you follow Jesus today? Because none of us actually see Jesus. He's not here visibly, even though we believe that he's present with us. And so how do we follow Jesus? Well, one way that we follow Jesus is we remember certain things about Jesus. We remember how Jesus came into the world as a little baby. He was born in, very hum, uh, in a very humble way to a very humble family. We remember the humility of Jesus and we say, oh, okay, so that means that I should be humble too. If Jesus could be that humble to come in that way, then I wanna be humble like he was. We remember that he came into the world and he came for us. He came to save us from our sins. Um, we also remember that he taught us. He taught us many wonderful things, things about himself, but uh, things about uh, the kingdom of God, things about how we ought to treat one another, uh, things about how uh, we ought to love other people. We ought to even love our enemies and uh, pray that God would do good to them so that maybe they could be turned around. We remember that about Jesus and so we follow him by following his example because he did that for his enemies. He loved his enemies. We remember that he died for us. And as we remember that he was put up on a cross, we can remember that he died for our sins. And we can remember that in such a way that we say, well, if Jesus died for my sins, if Jesus was willing to forgive me in that way, then I need to forgive other people when they do me wrong as well. And very happily, we remember that Jesus rose on the third day um, and uh, he rose to new life. And he told uh, his followers, and we're gonna get to this in a few months, it's gonna take a while, but he uh, said to some of his followers, I am the resurrection and the life and whoever believes in me will never die. 
And so we remember that uh, he was raised for our sakes. And so uh, as we remember these things, that he came for us, that he taught us, that he died for us, that he was raised for us, guess what? We're following Jesus. We're following him by remembering him. And then uh, he ascended into heaven and he is sitting at God's right hand. That's the way that we like to put that. Um, but that doesn't mean that he's not here anymore. We remember that he is present with us. And as we remember that he is present with us, that means that you and I can do something else very important to follow him. That means that when we're wondering what to do, when we don't know what to do, when we don't know what to say, um, and we don't know what to do, we don't even know sometimes what to think, and we're all in that situation, sooner or later you'll be in that situation too. But the fact that he's here with us means I can ask him anytime. I can pray to Jesus. And God's word says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives freely and without restraint. And that wisdom will be given to him. And that's how we follow Jesus. We ask him when we need something. We remember him when we want to think about how it was that he walked on this earth. And by doing these things, by remembering and by asking, by praying to him, we're following Jesus in the here and now. And I think that's pretty exciting. We pray and we hope and we teach with this hope in mind that as we go throughout this year, you're gonna to learn to love Jesus more and more, that you're going to uh, want to follow him more closely and that you're gonna to wanna to be like him in every aspect of your life as much as possible. And so let's pray about that. And we got a, sing, uh, a song to sing, which really goes along well with today's theme, which is, um, I will follow you. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, help us to be more like you each and every day. Help us to believe in you more strongly. Help us to trust you with our lives and help us to know, Lord, always that uh, you came and you died and you rose and you ascended into heaven so that you could be with us always. We thank you for that, Lord Jesus. It is in your name that we pray and all God's people said, amen. Now, Miss Puccinelli is gonna help me uh, say the Lord's Prayer and uh, sing the doxology. So uh, let's once again pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. So let's sing our final song. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Who you love, I love. Who you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow you.
bless you all. Have a great week. We'll see a lot of you around here. And uh, seventh, eighth graders, we're praying that you'll be able to come back and be with us soon. God bless you. Have a great week.